uh, listen to the word of God. And uh, as we are gathering together this evening, uh, we are going to study from the book of Revelation, especially now uh, I would request uh, uh, dear brother Ajay to uh, summarize the previous portions now. And after that, we will continue uh, with the uh, uh, chapter next. Praise God. Um, last week, we started the, uh, we had the privilege of um, studying further into the book of Revelation, and we started out with uh, a homework question that Pastor had given, um, which was, who was uh, left out uh, among the 12 tribes of, uh, of Israel, and who uh, was added? And so we, we found out that Dan and Ephraim uh, were the two that were left out and Joseph was the uh, addition. And we believe that this is because uh, Dan is the one who brought idol worship uh, into the, um, the house of Israel. So that is why he was excluded. And uh, Joseph was included for his uh, exemplary um, character and uh, his faith in God. In chapter seven, um, we then moved on and we saw that in chapter seven, um, uh, there are two primary groups of people. Um, the first group uh, was mentioned in verses four to eight, and then the second group uh, was mentioned in verses nine to 17. And we took a look at the second group that was mentioned, which was the great multitude uh, in white robes. Uh, we see from Revelation seven verses nine through 17 uh, is the passage that we focus on. The great multitude and from every this great multitude uh consisted of people from every nation every tribe uh every people uh and people from all tongues and then we um uh, we saw that they were standing before the throne and before the lamb and they were clothed in white robes symboling symbolizing victory holiness and separation in their hands, they held palm branches, um, which uh, symbolize celebration, joy, and rest, um, victory over sin, over the world, and over the Antichrist. We see that um, in John 12, 13, uh, as well as Leviticus uh, 23, verse 40, uh, it, it points to um, it symbolize, the palm branches symbolize celebration. We also looked at, um, we studied about the robes that uh, the great multitude were wearing, the white robes. These are the robes which are washed by, by the blood of the lamb. Um, and uh, a foreshadowing of that is seen in Isaiah verse one, uh, chapter one, verse 18, as well as in Zechariah uh, three, verses three to five. It was a foreshadowing um, of the robes that were washed by the blood of the lamb. Uh, we see that uh, the great multitude is crying out that salvation uh, is a gift of God. And they are the ones who have come out of the great tribulation. Um, and we see that uh, reference also in Matthew 24, 21, that uh, the, the saints are the, the great multitude, um, are the ones who are uh, martyred believers who were uh, martyred or who uh, laid down their lives for Christ during the time of the great tribulation and those who's, um, who refused to who refused to bow down to the Antichrist. Then we moved on to chapter eight and here we studied about the seven trumpet uh, trumpets uh, or otherwise called the seven trumpet judgments, uh, which we see in Revelation 8, 6 to 13, Revelation 9 verses 1 to 21, and Revelation 11, verses 15 to 19. The trumpet judgments, uh, as Pastor told us, uh, were during the first half, um, are going to be in the first half of the tribulation. And we see this in Revelation 8, verse 6, all the way to 9, verse 21. And then we also talked about the bowl judgments during the last half of the tribulation um, in Revelation uh, 15, verse 7 all the way through 16 verse 21 we also studied that uh, these judgments are the wrath of god um, the judgment that is, it, it symbolizes the judgment that is coming upon the unbelievers or the unbelieving in the world um, who are deceived by the antichrist and his false uh, promises and false teaching 
um, and they are um, they are the unbelievers who face the wrath of God for not believing in Jesus and that He is the Son of God and the one true living God. And we see that and see that in Revelation fourteen ten uh, and fifteen verse seven as well. We also previously covered the seal judgments um, the week before, and now we uh, we moved on to discuss um, um, the um, trumpet judgments. And then we see that the trumpet judgment and the bowl judgments both have um, seven different types, or there are seven different types of um, trumpet judgments and bowl judgments. It affects um, seven different realms or seven different areas. Um, the first uh, trumpet judgment uh, affects the earth as well as the first bowl judgment. The second trumpet and the second bowl judgment um, affect the sea. The third affects the rivers and fresh water. The fourth affects the heavens. The fifth affects mankind and pertains to torment of mankind or torment of unbelievers. The sixth um, references an army um, or pertains to an army. Um, and uh, the seventh um, pertains to angry nations. So then we looked further into uh, the effect of these, these judgments and um, how they affected the different areas. And so we see that the important of the trumpet judgments comes from what we learned in the Old Testament. It's, it's almost a foreshadowing or a precursor or um, uh, a symbolization um, and the trumpets in the Old Testament were used to call the people together to announce the coming of war and to announce special occasions, which we see in Numbers chapter 10, verses uh, 1 to 10. So after going over that, we, we stepped on to, we moved on to going over the types of judgment and the desolation that it, it created. So the first was the desolation on earth, um, referenced in Revelation chapter 8, verse 7. There was um, hail, which symbolized a sudden judgment of God, which we also saw in Exodus chapter 9, verses 22 to 23. Um, we saw that there was fire, which symbolized the wrath of God from Genesis 19, 24. And then we also saw that uh, blood indicated death. And so we had hail and fire um, mingled with blood, which was the seventh plague in Egypt. Um, and we see that referenced in Exodus 9, verses 18 to 26, and Joel verse two, uh, chapter 2, verse 30. The next we moved on to was the desolation of the seas. So you know, in Revelation 8, verses 8 and 9, we see the desolation in the sea, where the water of the sea became blood. And then uh, we also see how it is uh, correlating to the, the previous uh, or the past um, in the Old Testament, where the water was turned to blood uh, in the Egyptian plague in, in Exodus 7, 19 to 21. The, there was a, a triple judgment that resulted um, in the desolation of of the sea, which was a third of the waters were uh, of, of the salt waters or the seas were turned to blood. The creatures in the sea died and ships were destroyed. So these three were the results of the desolation in the sea. We then studied about the desolation in the rivers where uh, a great star fell to the earth from heaven. Um, in Revelation 8 verses um, 10 and 11, we see that the star was called Wormwood um, and a third of the rivers became Wormwood. So the rivers um, and their sources became polluted uh, so that uh, no one could drink the water. Uh, it became so bitter and many, die, oh, many will die. Uh, this is also uh, something that we see happened in the Old Testament in Exodus 15:23 at Mara, um, and the Hebrew word Mara means bitterness. 
and we see that um, the star Wormwood um, fell uh, into the fresh water and desolated the rivers and the fresh water. Wormwood is the name of a plant and uh, of the bitter tasting extract derived from it. But unlike the water at Mara in the Old Testament, um, in Revelation, we see that this water cannot be purified by man or by anything that man does, and many will die by drinking this water. The next we saw the de desolation in the heavens, Revelations 8, chapter, uh, chapter 8, verses 12 and 13. There was darkness day and night, which is like the ninth plague in Egypt uh, in ex that we saw in Exodus chapter 10, verse 21 to 23. This darkness uh, or this desolation in the heavens um, is not a partial desolation like we saw with the desolation of the sea where only a third of it um, was desolated. This is complete desolation. It affected the entire world, the sun, the moon, and the stars. So not like any of the previous trumpet judgments. In verse 13, we see that severe judgments are on the way as well. Um, it says that an eagle or an, uh, an angel or a messenger will appear and um, will announce and proclaim that even more severe judgments are coming um, to those um, who are still on this earth. Um, and that is where we left off from our previous Bible study. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, uh, Ajay, for elaborately bringing all those points together. And uh, <clears throat> uh, it seems uh, you all are grasping all the points that I'm teaching you. And uh, this is a great privilege once again to gather together. And uh, we are already out of time. Uh, anyways, uh, I would like to complete maybe chapter nine today. So we will uh, go for that. And uh, uh, as I told you in the, in the last class, we have been discussing from uh, Revelation chapter eight. Uh, it was regarding uh, the trumpet judgments and uh, we completed the uh, study of uh, up to fourth uh, trumpet judgment and uh, uh, what would happen when the angels blow the trumpets during the time of, uh, I mean, great tribulation. And also uh, we discussed about the, the uh, desolation on the earth, uh, desolation in the sea, desolation in the, in the, in the, in the uh, fresh water and desolation in the, in the heavens. But now we are going to study from chapter nine and uh, uh, main heading is uh, desolation from the satanic army from chapter 9, verses 1 to 11, okay? From chapter 9, verses 1 to 11. But before we uh, get into that chapter 9, uh, let us read uh, uh, maybe two verses for our further understanding. So uh, today, uh, Joel George is going to read the uh, Bible references. So Joel, I think you are ready for that. And uh, we are going to read uh, two main uh, portions, maybe two verses from Revelation. That is uh, Revelation chapter 8, verse 13, and uh, Revelation chapter 9, verse 12. Yes, Joel. As I watched, I heard an eagle that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blasts about to be sounded by the other three angels. And chapter 9, verse 12 was. The first woe is past. The two other woes are yet to come. Okay. So what do you understand from uh, these two verses? You know, in uh, chapter 8, verse 13, uh, the, the word woe is repeated three times. Okay. And the word woe indicates the persecution or the torment which is on the way and which is going to come. And uh, the repetition of the same word indicates there, uh, you know, there will be uh, three types of persecution going to happen in the future. And uh, in chapter 9, verse 12, we read that uh, the first woe is past. And behold, two woes are still coming after these things. That means already one woe is over by the fifth trumpet. And the second and the third was will happen 
by the sixth and the seventh trumpets. So that is the meaning of these two verses. Already the first war, that means already the first I mean, kind of persecution or torment is over and the second and the third wars are coming only and uh, uh, that, that means the, the persecution and uh, the tormentation of uh, I mean, Antichrist uh, and Satan it is coming only. So that is the meaning of that two verses. So now we will go to the, uh, the heading like uh, desolation from the satanic army. So we are going to uh, look into chapter nine now, chapter nine verses one to 11. So this uh, is, the, is the portion that you can see the desolation from the satanic army. Satande sainetthal ulladayirikkinna oru nasham endana avada sambhavikyan pogunnada ennulla oru bhagamana nammal chindikkan pogunnada desolation from the satanic army from revelation chapter 9 verses 1 through 11 so now joel is going to read that portion and uh, if you are writing down those points you can write it down from the screen sharing at the same time if not writing down you can look into your bible and uh, uh, try to read those portions now joel is going to read chapter 9 verses 1 through 11 the fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given to the key, to the, mm -hmm. the, the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and the sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. And out of the smoke, locusts came down on the earth and were given power like that of scorpions on the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not allowed to kill them, but only torture them for five months. And the agony they suffered was like that of a sting of a scorpion when it strikes. During those days, people will see death, but will not find it. They will long to, to die, but death would not elude them. The locusts looked like horses prepared to, for battle. On their heads they wore something like crowns for, of gold, and their faces resembled human faces. Their hair was like women's hair, and their feet were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings were, was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. They had tails with stingers like scorpions, and in their tails they had the power to torment people for five months. They had, they had as king over them the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek is Apollo. 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 Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you, that's enough. Thank you, uh, Joel. And, uh, you know, uh, you may feel that uh, it is little, a little difficult to understand all these portions about uh, many things it is written. But at the same time, we will try to, um, try to I mean, understand all those points in an easy way. You know, you can see that two types of desolations in chapter nine. Now, the first one uh, will be the desolation from the satanic army. The first one is the desolation from the satanic army. And the second one also will be the same, but that will be in a, in a different way. And uh, uh, the last three trumpet judgments will be related to the sat uh, satanic powers and the hell. Okay? The last three judgments will be related to the satanic powers and the hell. And in verse one, in verse one, we see that Apostle John wrote like this, that when the fifth angel sounded, I saw a star from heaven which had fallen to the earth. 
and that star had the key of the bottomless pit. Okay, so this is what John is saying that when the the angel was blowing the fifth fifth I mean trumpet, when he was uh, seeing something that a star is uh, star is fallen down from heaven uh, to the earth, uh, that star had a key of uh, uh, a bottomless pit. So uh, I think, you know, does that uh, make sense that the falling of the star is happening when John was seeing this vision? No, it, it makes sense that uh, this star is already fallen from heaven. This speaks about the fallen angel Lucifer because uh, in Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12, we read about uh, the Lucifer, like uh, how you have fallen from heaven or star of the morning, son of the son of the dawn. And also, uh, this star has a personality and holding the key of bottomless pit. You know, even uh, same John had seen the, some some of the some of the stars falling down from heaven, maybe in chapter six and eight. But those stars were literally the stars from the orbit or the sky. Okay, so John is seeing another stars in uh, chapter six and eight also. So that was the literal stars from heaven. Okay, maybe from the sky. But this one is really a person uh, like, like, like an angel coming down from heaven, okay? Now, for example, usually uh, uh, we call some of the prominent people as a superstar or the cinema stars or somebody. So we used to call them star, star, star. So we can, we can believe uh, Lucifer is allegorically uh, mentioned here as a star. Even uh, there, is, there is another argument also about this, that uh, the star, um, that it says that this is, the star is an is an angel of God. Okay, so there are there are some people they are arguing that okay this star, uh, which is fallen down from heaven, is an angel of God. But there is no perfect evidence to prove this argument because uh, there is one uh, a fallen I mean, angel that is Lucifer. So that that was the angel of God. But even after doing sin and after. Uh, uh, disobeying uh, with God and uh, after rebellious, uh, rebellious of that Lucifer, uh, uh, he he became the uh, demonic uh, uh, angel. So that's what we understand. Again, you know, in in chapter nine, we read an army of Satan is coming out of the bottomless pit. Okay, the same verse speaks about there is an army of Satan is coming out of the bottomless pit. You know, especially in 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 verse three. So when the angel uh, opened it with the with a God-given key, that means God has given the key of the bottomless pit to this uh, particular angel. Uh, I mean uh, that the angel which is fallen down, and it is given the key, uh, and uh, that angel is opening the abyss or the or the bottomless pit. You know about this bottomless pit. Look uh, uh, in his uh, 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 gospel, maybe Luke chapter eight verse thirty-one. It says that it is the, it is the abode of the demons. Okay, it is the abode of the demons. And also, uh, I mean, John, Apostle John, also is uh, writing something about uh, the same place of uh, uh, bottomless pit in John chapter, uh, uh, maybe uh, in his uh, in his uh, I mean, book of Revelation, maybe Revelation chapter twenty, verses one to three. I mean, uh, he says that okay, this is a temporary jail uh, 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 for the Satan during the Lord's reign on the earth. So uh, Jesus Christ is going to, I mean, rule over the earth for thousand years. And in that time, so this, uh, I mean, you can, you can read maybe that particular verses. Uh, yeah, Revelation chapter 20, verses uh, uh, one to three, says that Satan born for a thousand years. Okay, can you, yeah, Joel, you can read that verse. And chapter I two. saw an angel coming down out of heaven having the key to the abyss and holding in his hand a great chain. He seized the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended. After that time, he must be set free for a short time. Yeah, okay. So there also you can see that uh, uh, Pastor John is saying 
that uh, uh, that will be a place, a, a particular place for Satan as a, as a temporary uh, a jail for uh, for the Satan during the time of the thousand uh, years of uh, um, uh, Lord's reign. So, okay, so we will uh, look into the uh, same uh, verses maybe from chapter nine, uh, verses two to five now. And, you know, when he opened the bottomless pit, when what he was seeing from that particular place, the when, uh, this angel opened the bottomless pit from uh, verses two to five. We already read it. I'm going to just read it out, all those points, which is in the, in your screen. So uh, when this angel uh, was opening the bottomless pit, okay? So there are many things that he is uh, watching there. He is watching there. Something like uh, the smoke came, off the, uh, came out of the great furnace, okay? And he was watching that the smoke is coming out of the bottomless pit, uh, maybe out of the great furnace. And the sun and the air became darkened. The sun and the air became darkened. I mean, all these things are there in this particular verses in chapter nine, verses two to five. Okay, so you will get all those things from, from, from even Bible also. I'm just giving you the, uh, the important points. You know, out of the smoke, uh, locust came uh, upon the earth like an army of demons like an army of demons. You know, the eighth plague in, in Egypt was locust. Okay, when you read Exodus chapter 10, you will understand that the eighth plague was, uh, I mean, uh, these uh, locusts. Okay, so locust was the eighth plague in Egypt. So it was literally the, the locust. Okay, and uh, when God was sending that plague upon the Egyptian people, uh, that was a literal locust that it was coming and destroying all those, all those things there. But about the locust mentioned here in chapter nine, it is, it is believed that uh, there are uh, these, these locusts, uh, I mean, are not literal locusts because of many reasons. Okay, when, you, when you go to those I mean, points, you will understand what is the reason that we can, we can say that these locusts are not maybe the, the literal locusts because this locust has power like a scorpion. Okay? This, I mean, locust has power like a scorpion. So that is the uh, that is the main, I mean, uh, one reason that uh, you can say that this locust has power like a scorpion. Okay, and God ordered them not to hurt the grass, trees, and green things. Okay, so God is giving an order and a command to this locust that you should not hurt or you should not harm any grass or any trees. And uh, and green things. Okay, so uh, and and also this locust is given an, an order not to hurt the men who have seal of God on their foreheads. Okay, so and this locust have a king also. Okay, in in the, in, the, in that verse maybe um, what is that? Okay, yeah, um, in 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 one one of the verses uh, from. Yeah, okay, 11, verse 11 says that uh, they have a king over them. Uh, the angel of the Abyss, his name is Hebrew, is Abaddon, and in the Greek, he is the name, his name is Abelion. Okay, so here you can see that this locust is having uh, a king. But you know, when you read uh, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 27, Solomon says that the real locusts do not have a king. They do not have a king. That's what we read in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 27. So we will understand it is obviously, I mean, it is going to be a symbolic uh, symbolism uh, to picturize a powerful enemy uh, armed for battle. So uh, there, 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 is, there, is a, there is a picture of a powerful army of Satan, which is ready for the battle. So that is what we understand from this particular portion and how God is going to use, I mean, these kinds of army, satanic army to torture the people, those who are living uh, uh, in, 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 in the time of the great tribulation period. And this army of demons are compared to locust and locust is a symbol of destruction in the Old Testament. So in different parts of the Bible in Old Testament, we understand uh, locust are the symbol of the destruction, especially in the book of Joel. When you read a uh, uh, book of Joel, you will understand that uh, locusts were uh, making Many kinds of destructions in the, I mean, in the places uh, 
uh, which is written in I mean uh, book of Joel. So that is the that is the important things that we have to understand from that portion. And now we are going to study I mean about the appearance of this locust, which is described in verses seven to nine. Okay, the appearance of this locust. Okay, so this locust is coming from the bottomless pit. Okay, and we have to understand God is using this. I mean, particular locust, maybe this may be a kind of uh, an army of Satan when I mean, coming out of the out of the satanic, I mean, uh, a group of people, group of angels uh, coming out of the bottomless pit to, to torture uh, the, the people, the unbelieving world of those time of uh, great tribulation. OK, so uh, let us see what are the what are the uh, what are the specialities of this uh, I mean, locust and also uh, the uh, what is that? the uh, appearance of these, uh, I mean, uh, uh, locusts. Okay, so it says that uh, like horses uh, uh, prepared for a battle, okay, when John was seeing these, uh, I mean, locust, he says that I'm watching this, this locust like a horse is prepared for battle. So he is seeing not only one locust, he says that, okay, it's just like a many horses coming towards, I mean, towards the earth. Okay, many horses together they are coming towards the earth, then they are prepared to battle among the uh, battle with the with the I mean people those who are living in this earth. And and also another thing is on their heads there were crowns of something like gold. Okay, so that's what you can see in the picture about the locust, you know, in their head. Okay, there is a crown which is something like uh, I mean gold, and also their faces are like men. Their faces are like men, okay? And their hair, like the hair of woman. Their hair is like the hair of woman. And the teeth, like the teeth of lions. Teeth are like the teeth of lions. And uh, the breastplates are just like an iron, iron breastplate, okay? And they had tails like scorpions, okay? Their tails, uh, the, the, you know, usually, the, the locusts are not having that much, I mean, a tail, but in this locust, the particular lo I mean, locust that uh, you can see here in chapter nine is having the tail and that tail is like a scorpion. Okay? And uh, uh, the noise, the noise is like an army of chariots rushing to a battle. Okay, so when this locust is coming, John was seeing and John was just hearing a particular, I mean, sound or like, like an army of chariots rushing for a battle. Okay, so that was the noise of uh, this locust. And uh, again, uh, you can see there, and they were not given authority to kill them. Okay, so they were not give, given the authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Okay, so this is what we understand from that particular, when verses maybe verse five says that, uh, and they were not permitted to kill anyone but the torment for five months and the torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings a man. So they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. It is believed that the lifespan of uh, locust is only five months. That may be the reason the torment through the, the locust mentioned here is for only for five months. Okay, so for only for five months, they are supposed to torment or torture the people. But as God's people, uh, we, can, we can thank God for, because you know, Jesus Christ is holding the keys of hell and the death, according to Revelation chapter one, verse 18. In Revelation chapter one, verse 18, it says that Jesus Christ is holding the keys of hell and death, okay? So we are safe and we have the protection by God Without the knowledge of God, nothing will happen because Jesus Christ is having the keys of the hell and the death. And we have to thank God that Jesus is holding that. But this particular angel, which is fallen from heaven, is given uh, the key of the bottomless pit only for five months. And that time, and that angel and the locust and that army of Satan is going to torture the people, the unbelieving world of those, I mean, great tribulation period. Now, uh, you know, uh, you have to uh, know about many things about that, and we have no time to explain all those things. And once again, I will, I will give you that picture, now the same picture of that locust once again. Look into that uh, picture 
and you will understand what is the speciality of that locust and uh, what is there on the head and uh, what is the speciality of the tail and uh, um, and uh, what is that all the all those things you know whenever whenever you see see that picture itself you are getting an idea about i mean what is the speciality of the hair and the teeth and breastplates or something face like a man okay so these are the these are the differences and these are the specialities of the locust okay so um, now uh, these all these things we already discussed that these are the things that is going to happen when the fifth trumpet is blown okay so that when the fifth trumpet is blown these all things will be happening and these these kinds of locusts and uh, these kinds of uh, uh, satanic army is going to torture to to persecute the people those who are living uh, on this earth during the time of the great tribulation and we cannot uh, do more detailed study on these things and uh, even uh, that is not necessary to okay so now we will think about and study about sixth trumpet and the things going to happen when the sixth trumpet is blown okay so the six uh, when the sixth trumpet is blown and there are many things are happening that is seen from chapter 9 verses 13 through 21 okay uh, chapter 9 verses 13 through 21 okay so now joel you can read uh, uh, chapter 9 verses 13 to 21 those who are writing down those points you can write down the points at the same time if you are not writing down you can read i mean look into the bible and read those portions joel you can read now chapter 9 verses 13 to 21 The sixth angel sounded his trumpet and I heard a voice coming from the four horns of the golden altar that that is before God it said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet release the four angels who were bound at the great river Euphrates Euphrates and the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind the number of the mounted troops were was tw- twice 10000 times 10000 i heard their number the horses and riders i saw in my vision looked like this their breastplates were fiery fiery red dark blue and yellow as sulfur their heads of horses resembled the heads of lions and out of their mouths came fire smoke and sulfur a third of mankind was killed by the the three plagues of fire smoke and sulfur that came out of their mouths the power of the horses was in their mouths and in their tails for their ta- tails were like snakes having heads with which they inflict injury the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands they did not stop worshiping demons and idols of gold silver bronze and stone and wood idols that cannot see hear or walk nor did they repent of their murders their magic arts their sexual immorality or their thefts theft okay so uh, we already read this portion maybe chapter 9 verses 13 to 21 because uh, we won't be taking time to uh, read all those portions again so we already read it and uh, i th- i believe that you already Uh, have gone through those portions okay because i already announced it that you have to read chapter 9 uh, before coming for this bible study okay so you have some ideas about uh, chapter 9 i believe now uh, you can see that when the sixth trumpet was blown four angels who were bound at the great river of euphrates were released that's what we read in verse 
So when the sixth trumpet was blown, four, four angels who were bound at the great river of Euphrates were released. And the appearance of those four angels are symbolized here like an army of horsemen, okay? like an army of horsemen. And the total number of that army is counted about 200 million. Okay? 200 million people were coming out from there, just like an army. Okay? That is what we understand. And also, it seems that these angels are apparently wicked and satanic angels because uh, no holy angels would be bound. Okay? In, in, in chapter 7, uh, we see the four angels. And those angels are uh, heavenly angels. Okay, in chapter seven, we can see four angels, and those angels are uh, 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 really we understand those angels are the I mean uh, heavenly angels, heavenly angels. But uh, the four angels mentioned here in chapter nine is absolutely the demonic angels, the demonic angels. Okay, so we have many uh, evidence for to prove that. Okay, you know, Bible does not clearly say anything about these four angels, but the Jewish historians I mean, confirms that, you know, uh, these are the fallen angels which are used for the punishment of God. And let me give you some of the historical and uh, maybe geographical I mean, details about the river of Euphrates, then you will, you will understand uh, why uh, this river is particularly mentioned in the book of Revelation. You know, uh, when we study about the river of Euphrates, we understand in one side of this Euphrates River, uh, there is Israel and Saudi Arabia. Okay? Israel and Saudi Arabia is in one side of this uh, I mean, Euphrates River. And in the other side of this river, there comes the Iraq. Okay? So Iraq is coming uh, at the other side of this river, Euphrates. Okay? And Babylon is situated at the, at the, border, uh, at the, at the border of Iraq. Okay, or at the, at the boundary of the Iraq, the Babylon is situated there. You know, when you read Genesis chapter two, uh, you can see there uh, four rivers are there. Okay? So God is, I mean, uh, arranging four rivers in, in, in uh, Garden of Aden, and it is called, uh, I mean, a Pishon, the river of Pishon, and the river of Gihon, and the river of Tigris, and the last one is Euphrates, okay? Uh, the last one is Euphrates. In, and in, in some translation, it is written Frath. Again, the Frath is in, in Malayalam also Frath. So that is the Hebrew word of that. And uh, the English word is Euphrates. Okay, so these are the, I mean, uh, rivers uh, you can see in, in Genesis chapter two. And especially uh, the Egypt and the Babylon are always being pictured as the debt against God uh, and Israel. Always uh, the, the Egypt, and the Babylon is even when you read Bible, especially the um, what is that the, the prophetical books of the Old Testament and also Book of Revelation, you can see that always the Egypt and the and the uh, Israel, sorry Egypt and the Babylon, they are always fighting with Israel and they are always against to to God and also to Israel. In that way. We can we can take the Euphrates as the symbol of God's judgment. Okay, so uh, uh, um, because you know uh, this uh, Euphrates, the river Euphrates is, I mean, uh, has uh, I mean much more importance in Bible also. You know, in many places this river is known as a great river. Okay, uh, as a great river. Maybe uh, you you have that those verses there, Genesis chapter fifteen verse eighteen, Deuteronomy chapter one verse seven, Joshua chapter one verse four and Revelation chapter nine verse fourteen, Revelation chapter sixteen verse twelve. All these verses talks about that. I mean, this the river of Euphrates is a great river. It's a great river. So when you read about this river, that uh, okay, it's a great river. I mean, you have to think one thing that it is mentioned great river not because it's a great or big river, rather because of the great events which happen and which is going to happen around this river, okay? So when you, when you, when you study the Bible, you will understand uh, this river is always connected to the, I mean, Babel and Babylon, okay? The Euphrates River is always connected to the Babel and Babylon. So when you, when you read uh, Genesis 11, you will understand what is Babel, 
okay so that the tower of babel and all and also babylon okay? so babylon is the center of idol worship especially in 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 revelation chapter 18 we read about the fall of babylonian uh, 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 babylon in future so that will happen in future so okay so what i'm trying to uh, tell you is you know uh, always this Euphrates is always connected with the Babylon and you have to understand and those people are always against the Israel and we have to think about this thing that you know uh, we we cannot say that okay what would be this the main uh, four angels and uh, why it is coming from uh, the Euphrates uh, from from the side of river uh, Euphrates but there is no clear evidence to prove that but uh, at, the, at the same time we can conclude that coin in this way that uh, always Babylon and that place, that area is always standing against God and Israel. So that may be the reason that uh, these angels to, I mean, torture these people, those who are living in this earth, uh, it is coming from that area. Now we will uh, go to the next portion that is the appearance and mission of these armies of horsemen. Okay, so we have been studying about, uh, I mean, something about these, uh, I mean, armies, but as now, we are going to study about the appearance and the mission of this armies of horsemen. Okay, so that is from chapter nine, verses sixteen to nineteen. Chapter nine, verses sixteen to nineteen. Already uh, we read that portion here, and uh, this is the picture of uh, I mean this I mean armies of horsemen. Okay, you will understand very clearly when I explain all those things. Okay, so um, uh, this is the picture of that and. You know what are the specialities of uh, I mean uh, this uh, 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 this army? Okay, it, it says like this: they had breastplates at different colors. Okay, they had a breastplate of different colors. That means uh, uh, the the, the uh, fiery red. Okay, then uh, hyacinth blue and sulfur yellow. Okay, these are the three colors which is given for the breastplates of uh, I mean this army. Okay, this army. So you can see that in, in the picture itself from uh, chapter 9, verses 16 to 19. Okay, again, and uh, the head of the horses were like the head of lions. Okay, the head of the horses were like the head of lion. And, and next thing, out of their mouth came fire, smoke, and brimstone. Okay, okay, out of their mouth, there comes the fire the smoke and the prime storm. And also the deadly power of these horses is in their mouth and tail, not in their legs. Okay, So God is giving that power on these horses that is in their mouth okay? and the tail, the mouth and the tail. Okay, And also the fire, smoke and the bright stone is issuing from their mouth and the tails are like biting serpents okay you can see in that particular uh, picture that uh, their I mean, tails are just like uh, the biting serpent okay the, the serpent which is going to bite the people so that is the i mean picture of that i mean uh, that army okay and they can attack men from the front as well as from the rear side okay from the front they can attack the people and also from the rear side also they can attack the people because their tails are like biting serpents. Okay, they, because their tails are like biting. I mean, serpents. They can uh, attack the people from front and also from as well as from the from the rear side. Okay, so I'll be once again. You can you can show that picture. Now, the locust. Yeah, uh, yeah the, this one there is. Okay, so. Um, um, what is going to happen in those days because of these things, okay? Because of these armies, which is coming from there, from the, uh, you know, when, when uh, the four angels are coming out of the uh, river uh, Euphrates. So these all things are going to happen. Many uh, people will have to go through the persecution and torment by this demonic horseman army, okay? This is called the demonic horseman army. And because of this army, because of the, torture of this army, many people will be persecuted and tormented and they will be tortured. And that is going to be the, the, the really horrible and dangerous days when this is going to happen during the time of the Great Tribulation. Okay, so 
Uh, now, you know, the interesting thing or the important thing is written in verses 20 and 21. Okay? So that is, the, that is the last verses of uh, uh, this chapter. So we will go to that point. You now, let us read that verses. Okay, chapter uh, uh, 9, verses 20 and 21. Uh, we will read that, those verses, two verses. Yes, Joy. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not, still did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshiping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, idols that cannot see, hear, or walk. Nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immortality, or their thefts. Okay, so in this particular two verses, you will understand what is there. There are many unrepented people. There are many unrepented people. Now, even though those people were tortured like anything, they are not ready to repent about their sins. Okay, and you know, in those days, in the in the time of uh, the during the time of great tribulation, the the Christian church will not be on the earth. We will be with Jesus, okay? We won't be here on this earth. But at the same time, the unbelieving world, the people, those who are not yet received Jesus as their personal savior, I mean, those people will be there on the earth. And what is going to happen for all those people that they will be tortured like anything. But even though those people are going through the torment and those people are going through the persecution, they are not ready to repent about their sin but still continuing many kinds of evil things. Okay, that's what we read in verses 20 and 21. You know, even though they are going through the torment, even though they are going through the tribulation, and even though they are going through the persecution, those people still continuing many kinds of evil things and sins in this world. You know, what are the things they, they are continuing? Okay, the demon worship. Okay, the demon worship they are doing, which goes hand in hand with idolatry, will be the leading scene okay so the demon worship and also the idolatry will be the leading sin which those people are going to do even even in those days also again the murder will happen and the theft will happen okay that also will not only happening it will increase in those days okay and there will be there will be various i mean kinds of sexual immorality immorality also and also I um, mean, uh, what is that? The, the, the use of drugs will become a demonic religious practice. Even today also, you can see that use of drugs, you know, the, the people, those who are, I mean, uh, uh, gathering for their party and everything, you know, they are doing all these things, especially you can see many, I mean, satanic, uh, satanic worship and satanic churches in different areas, even in even US also, okay? So they are using the, the drugs and they are using all kinds of evil things as a, as a demonic religious practice. Okay, through that only they are I mean, enjoying and all those things because they are using those practices just like a demonic religious practice. Okay, so especially, you know, in, in these two verses, you can see twice, I mean, uh, there, is a, there is a mentioning the word that they did not repent. Okay, twice it is there. Uh, it is that the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands. They did not repent of the works of their hands. And also, at last, the 21st verse is, and they did not repent of their murders, nor of their curses, nor of their immorality, nor of their thefts. Okay? So in these two verses, you can see two times they did not repent. When I, was, when I was preparing this note, I was just thinking even today also, there are many people going through different tormentation, different sickness, different uh, destruction, calamities. You know, they are facing many problems in their life. Even today also, it's not, I mean, this is talking about the great tribulation, but even today also, there are many people going through many, 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 I mean, different kinds of destruction and sickness and calamities and everything, but they are still enjoying the worldly pleasures and sin. They are not ready to repent about their sins. You, know, you have to think one thing, 
the Apostle John is writing that there will be many who don't like to repent about their, about their sins in the time of great tribulation. Hallelujah. So you have to think about that thing. You know, even though they are tortured, even though they are in a horrible time, you know, those people will not be able to. So John is just watching that vision. Oh, and he was saying, okay, even though these people are tortured, they are not looking unto the Lord and they are not calling the name of the Lord. And still those people are just continuing doing in sin and doing many idolatry and worshiping the demons and worshiping Satan and doing all kinds of evil things. Okay, so we have to think about our life and our I mean, particular situation of today and we have to submit us with the mighty hand of God, you know. But this is this is our great opportunity to once again confess and repent about our sins, deciding not to enjoy in the worldly pleasures, but hold fast to faith in Jesus Christ and prepare ourselves for the return of Jesus Christ. You know, the reason why I am I mean explaining all these points, I mean, here through this Bible study is you know, none of us should be, I mean, I mean, left off. I mean, uh, 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 at, the, at the time of the return of Jesus Christ, we have to think about, you know, what is going to happen during the time of the great tribulation. You know, the things which is going to happen, we, can, we cannot bear it. So this is the right time. This is the good opportunity for every person, those who are listening this word and this class, that we have to give ourselves in the mighty hand of God and ask to the Lord, oh Lord, I'm just spending about my sins and I'm just repenting about my weakness, about my mistakes, that because I mean this, I mean the, the great tribulation time is going to be a torturing period for the people, those who are living on the earth. So let us also pray that oh Lord, I mean save us a God from that and let us repent about our sins and let us rep repent about all our mistakes and surrender our life to the presence of God and let us pray together. Hallelujah. So shall we all close our eyes in the presence of God this evening.